chemical reaction can be defined simply as the interaction and chemical transformation of the atoms and molecules of usually two or more substances to form a new substance or substances. The substances that take part in a chemical reaction are known as the reactants, while the new substances formed after a chemical reaction has occurred are known as the products. A chemical reaction results in the rearrangement of the atoms and molecules of the reactants to form products with new atomic and molecular orientations. This is achieved through the making or breaking of bonds between the constituting atoms. It is worth noting here that in a chemical reaction, atoms of one element do not change into those of another element. It is also worth noting that atoms do not disappear from the reactant mixture or appear from elsewhere. Chemical reactions are different from the physical changes in that the former leads to the creation of new substances while the latter merely alters the state of the original substance without changing its chemical composition. A very common everyday example of a chemical change would be the burning of paper. Paper which is made up mostly of cellulose fibers when burned creates a new substance in the form of black ash, also known as carbon, and also releases a gas known as carbon dioxide and water in the form of water vapor. There are many different forms of chemical reactions that take place in nature. These can be categorized into five major types, namely combination reaction, decomposition reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction, oxidation and reduction reaction or simply redox reaction. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a few laboratory examples of the third type of reaction, which is displacement reaction. Displacement reaction aka single displacement reaction aka replacement reaction is a type of chemical reaction wherein a more reactive element displaces or replaces a lesser reactive element from a reactant compound. While on the topic of relative reactivities of elements, shown here is the standard chart for the reactivities of some elements, mostly metals. You will learn in more detail about this reactivity series in higher classes. The reactivity series of elements shows an array of some common metal elements from the periodic table arranged in a descending order of their reactivity with the most reactive element placed at the top and the least reactive element placed at the bottom of the series. In most reactivity series charts, hydrogen, although generally classified as a non-metal, is included as a reference element based on which the other metallic elements are arranged according to their relative reactivities with hydrogen. Keep in mind this reactivity series as we proceed with the various example reactions in this video. Single displacement reaction occurs when the two reactants are brought together in a reaction vessel. This type of reaction typically occurs between two reactants wherein one reactant is a pure element and the other reactant is a compound in which one of the constituent element is less reactive as compared to the reactant in the elemental form. A typical displacement reaction can be represented by the chemical equation a plus BC gives AC plus B. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a few laboratory examples of single displacement reaction. To perform these experiments, we'll need the following. A fresh piece of iron nail, a length of thread, copper sulfate solution, some test tubes, test tube stand, zinc granules, a 250 ml beaker, dilute sulfuric or hydrochloric acid, an apparatus consisting of a test tube fitted with a one-hole rubber cork and a delivery tube bent at right angles in four places as shown here. A few wooden splints and a matchbox. Sodium metal. Stainless steel spatula or a knife. Blotting papers. A glass pneumatic trough or a large beaker. Red litmus paper. Petri dish or watch glass. 
Before the start of the experiments, make sure to follow all necessary safety precautions in handling chemicals. Wear lab coat, safety goggles and gloves. Perform all experiments involving the release of gases in a well-ventilated area or better still within the confines of a fume hood. Dilute acids can still be corrosive to your skin even if dilute. Hydrogen gas is highly flammable. Sodium metal is corrosive. To perform this experiment, first take the iron nail and tie a piece of thread on one end. Now, fill about half of a test tube with copper sulfate solution and place the tube on a stand. Note the color of the copper sulfate solution. Carefully immerse the iron nail into the copper sulfate solution in the test tube. Leave this setup undisturbed for a few hours and carefully observe at intervals what happens to the iron nail and to the copper sulfate solution. A few seconds after the iron nail has been introduced into the copper sulfate solution, you will notice a reaction beginning to occur and tiny bubbles are released from the surface of the iron nail. A few minutes later, you will also begin to notice that the shiny surface of the iron nail begins to tarnish into a brown color. After a couple of hours, the entire surface of the iron becomes coated with a thick brownish to golden brown layer. The deep blue color of the copper sulfate has also changed to a light green color. At this point, if you carefully pull off the iron nail from the solution, scrape off the brownish deposits from the surface and transfer them to a petri dish or a test tube containing fresh water, you will notice that the deposits are actually made up of fine orange-red to reddish-brown particles. The single displacement reaction of iron nail in copper sulfate can be represented by the chemical equation shown here. Initially, the color of copper sulfate solution can be seen to be deep blue. As the reaction progresses, the green color formed in the test tube is ferrous sulfate solution. The reddish-brown deposits formed on the surface of the iron nail are actually particles of pure copper. In this reaction, the more reactive iron displaces the lesser reactive copper from the blue copper sulfate solution. The atoms of iron go into solution and combine with the sulfate ions to eventually form ferrous sulfate solution which is light green in color. Simultaneously, the cupric ions from the copper sulfate solution gets deposited onto the surface of the iron nail to form solid metallic copper. The end result is an exchange of position of iron and copper. This reaction will continue for as long as there are iron atoms to displace the copper ions and vice versa. So if you use a highly concentrated solution of copper sulfate and leave the iron nail to sit in this solution for a couple of days, the entire iron nail will eventually dissolve into solution, leaving behind a rich deposit of pure copper metal particles in the test tube. This experiment is a classic example of single displacement reaction because there is a displacement or exchange in position of just one element with another element. In this case, a metal element displaces another metal element, hence also known as metal-metal displacement. A similar metal-metal displacement reaction can be seen when a strip of copper is dipped into silver nitrate solution. The more reactive copper displaces the less reactive silver and initially the strip of copper appears to turn dark grey to blackish. As time progresses, a thick deposit of greyish colored fine needles of pure elemental silver is formed at the copper strip. The color of the solution also turns from colorless to blue.
the reaction is as shown here. Yet another common example of a metal-metal displacement reaction is the displacement of copper from its solution by magnesium metal. When a strip of magnesium is made to come in contact with copper sulfate, a fairly vigorous effervescent reaction commences and eventually reddish-brown deposits of copper forms on the surface of the magnesium metal strip and the color of the solution changes from a deep blue to colorless. The reaction can be represented as follows. To perform this experiment, take a few pieces of zinc granules in a test tube. Place the test tube in a test tube stand. Meanwhile, fill the 250ml beaker with water. Also fill an empty test tube to the brim with water. Stopper the mouth of the test tube with your thumb and place it upside down into the beaker containing water. Now, add about 15 to 20 ml of a dilute acid to the test tube containing the zinc metal pieces. For this experiment, I'll be using dilute hydrochloric acid. Immediately stopper the mouth of the tube with the rubber cork pre-inserted into a delivery tube bend in four places. Introduce the other end of the delivery tube into the mouth of the test tube that was placed into the beaker. Observe carefully. As you add acid to the zinc, a violent effervescent reaction occurs and bubbles are released from the surface of the zinc metal. The gas bubbles begin to collect in the test tube in the beaker. Allow the gas to completely fill the test tube. Then remove the test tube from the beaker while covering its mouth with your thumb. Bring a burning splint close to the mouth of the test tube. You will see that the gas in the tube ignites with a pop sound. The displacement reaction of zinc with dilute hydrochloric acid follows the chemical equation shown here. The gas bubbles produced from the reaction is hydrogen gas. When a lighted splint is introduced into the test tube filled with the gas, it burns with a characteristic pop sound, indicating that the gas is indeed hydrogen. The solution formed in the reaction tube at the end of the reaction is zinc chloride. In this reaction, the more reactive zinc atoms displace the less reactive hydrogen ions from the hydrochloric acid to eventually form zinc chloride. The displaced hydrogen ions recombine to form molecular hydrogen or H2, which then get released from the reaction mixture in the form of hydrogen gas. This reaction is also a classic example of single displacement reaction because a single element, in this case hydrogen ions, is displaced by another element, in this case zinc. Here, a metal element displaces a non-metal element from a dilute acid solution and is therefore also known as metal acid displacement reaction. This reaction between zinc and a dilute acid is also one of the most common ways of producing hydrogen gas in the laboratory. A similar metal acid displacement reaction can also be demonstrated using many other metal elements and acids commonly available in the laboratory. As long as the metal is more reactive than hydrogen of the acid, according to the reactivity chart of metal elements, a displacement reaction will inevitably occur with the release of hydrogen gas and the formation of the corresponding metal salt solution. Some metals can also displace hydrogen from water molecule in a metal-water displacement reaction. A very common example is the reaction of sodium with water. 
To perform this experiment, take a lump of sodium metal from its bottle and place it on a sheet of blotting paper. Blot away the paraffin oil from the sodium metal. Next, using a knife or spatula, cut off a tiny piece of the metal and using a clean and dry forcep, drop the piece of sodium into the beaker or trough containing water. Observe what happens. As soon as the sodium metal comes in contact with water, a violent reaction occurs. The sodium metal can be seen to randomly run around on the surface of the water while producing copious amounts of white smoke. At some point, the sodium metal may also be seen to start catching fire. The reaction proceeds as long as the sodium metal remains. Eventually, the metal shrinks in size, gradually disappears and the reaction stops. At the end of the reaction, if you dip a strip of red litmus paper into the water in the beaker, the red litmus is seen to turn blue. The reaction of sodium with water follows the chemical equation shown here. According to the reactivity series, sodium is much more reactive than the reference element hydrogen and is placed somewhere at the top of the series. This is the reason why sodium metal violently reacts with water. The smoke-like gas produced from the surface of the metal is hydrogen gas. The reaction also produces copious amounts of heat, so much so that the hydrogen gas, which is a highly flammable gas, may also ignite and the sodium metal appears to catch fire. The solution formed at the end of the reaction is sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, also known as an alkali. Due to its basic nature, it turns red litmus blue. In this reaction, the more reactive sodium metal displaces the lesser reactive hydrogen from water molecule to form its hydroxide. The free hydrogen atoms combine among themselves to produce molecular hydrogen, which is released in the form of hydrogen gas. A similar metal-water displacement reaction can be seen in many other elements as well. Depending on how far away the metal element is placed from the reference element hydrogen in the reactivity series, the reaction may be either quite slow or explosively violent. A type of chemical reaction very closely related to the single displacement reaction is what is known as the double displacement reaction, wherein two simultaneous displacement events occur between two pairs of species in the same reaction event. I've covered in detail about the double displacement reaction in a separate video. Do make sure to check that out as well by clicking on the link in the description below. So this was all about the single displacement reaction. In separate videos, I've covered the other types of chemical reactions as well. Make sure to check out those videos too. The links are in the description below. If you found this video helpful in your studies or teaching, then please do consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with friends, colleagues and anyone from whom this video might be relevant. Thanks for watching.